Jennifer, last name Hamendy, H-O-M-E-N-D-Y. Yes, that's me. <laughs> that, that is correct. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Wish it was under better circumstances, but. <laughs> Unfortunately. DC. We're, we're kind of scattered all over, but our headquarters is just here. Good. Yep. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer Hamindy, and I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. The NTSB is an independent federal agency charged by Congress with investigating every civil aviation accident in the United States and significant accidents and other modes of transportation. Our mission, and it's our mission here while we're uh, on scene, is to determine how this happened, why it happened, and what safety improvements are needed to prevent it from ever happening again. Before I begin, on behalf of the NTSB, I'd like to extend our deepest condolences to those who lost loved ones in this tragic event. This was a terrible tragedy, and I cannot imagine what the families are going through right now. And so our hearts go out to each and every one of you. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our partners. First and foremost, the U.S. Coast Guard. I'd also like to thank the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office, the Ventura Fire Department, and a host of law, law, sorry, a host of law enforcement and local officials that have helped with the rescue and, re and uh, recovery operations. What I want to focus on today is the role of the NTSB, our team that is here, and talk a bit about the process. First, the NTSB is leading the safety investigation. We have a, a memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Coast Guard that lays out the responsibilities and who is doing what. We have determined this is a major marine casualty and the NTSB will be leading the investigation. However, the Coast Guard is a party to the investigation and the Coast Guard has enforcement authority over these vessel operations so they will be conducting their own safety investigation uh, and, and enforcement investigation, uh, and the two entities will be coordinating along the way. As far as our team, our investigator in charge is Adam Tucker. Adam has been, has, uh, been working in the Office of Marine Safety at the National Transportation Safety Board for some time. In addition, he has significant experience in passenger vessel operations. Adam will be leading a team of 16. We have experts from operations, engineering, survival factors, and fire analysis. And I just want to add that this is not the first fire that we have investigated on board a small passenger vessel. This past December 11, 2018, the board approved a report of, a, of an accident investigation involving a fire aboard a small passenger vessel in, near Port Ritchie in Florida. 
Additional information on that can be found through our website where the report is posted. In addition to the investigators, we have a uh, uh, three staff from our family assistance team that is working with the response community to provide the families with the resources and the, the information that they need. As far as our process, the NTSB arrived on scene at 10 a.m. today, Pacific Daylight Time. We immediately received a very thorough briefing from the U.S. Coast Guard where we began to get a lay of the land and then we began to organize our thoughts around the investigation and our process. Tonight, we will have an organizational meeting where we will likely establish parties to the investigation. Parties mean individuals that have technical expertise that help us obtain the factual information that we need in order to conduct our safety investigation. In addition to that, we will likely form investigative groups. These are smaller groups that will drill down on specific a uh, aspects of the investigation. We've also begun to identify witnesses and others uh, that we would like to interview and uh, document the types of materials that we need to obtain as part of the investigation. We expect to be on scene about seven to 10 days. During that time, our investigators will be collecting the perishable evidence. We will not be determining the cause of the fire while on scene. That comes later in the investigative process. Nor will we speculate on the cause. However, we will provide factual information as it becomes available. So I'd like to direct everyone to monitor our Twitter feed at NTSB underscore newsroom where we will be posting when we will have the daily press briefings. In addition to that, we are asking the public, we are asking for photos, videos, or any other information that you think will help us in the safety investigation. Please email us at witness at ntsb.gov. That's witness at ntsb.gov. With that, I'm going to take a couple of questions. So, uh, please raise your hand. I'll call on you, and then uh, give me your name and your affiliation. No, we won't. Uh, the question is, will we? How will we begin? We will. Will we wait until the boat or the vessel comes out of the water? No. Our investigation has already begun. We've already begun having discussions, like I said, with our fantastic partners, the U.S. Coast Guard and others. We've begun to obtain uh, factual information and documents. We've uh, reached out uh, to uh, develop a list of people that we would like to interview. And uh, as I said, the, the investigation actually began before we even arrived on scene. It's uh, just we try not to arrive while uh, rescue and recovery is ongoing. Yes. Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, what key questions are we going to want to ask and what types of people are we going to want to interview? Uh, for ex I'll take the second one first. We're going to want to interview the surviving crew members. We're going to want to interview the companies that were involved. We'll want to interview, for example, uh, the first responders, certainly the Coast Guard and others. As far as the key questions, I th 
that we want to get answered. I, I think I think what I'll it's a bit early to tell on what key questions we want to be answered. What I will say, for example, there there is information that we will want to obtain. Uh, we look at the vessel, we look at the crew, uh, the operations, and we look at the environment in which they're operating. So obviously we're going to want to look at training. That includes firefighter training. We're going to look at um, survival factors. We're going to want to know how what fire extinguishers were on board. Uh, we're going to want to know where their life jackets on board, where their lifeboats. Those are, that's the type of information we're going to want uh, to find out. Yes. Uh, the question is, have we talked to the dive teams and have we received information? I think I'm going to ask Adam to talk about that. Uh, to answer your question, no, we have not spoken to any of the dive teams. Uh, from what I understand, they're still in an active recovery right now. Right. Uh, and while they're in, and just to add to that, while they're in recovery mode, that's not something we want to interfere with. That's the first priority is rescue and recovery. Our investigation is always second. But we will be doing that uh, along the way at some point. Yes? So based on what you know so far, how confident are you that you'll ultimately be able to come up with a cause of this fire? I am 100% confident that our investigators will determine the cause of this fire, why it occurred, how it occurred, and what is needed to prevent it from happening again. Absolutely. Yes. How long will it take for the results of the investigation? It typically takes between 12 and 24 months to get a final report. What I will tell you is that we issue a preliminary report within about 10 days of the, ac of the accident, in this case the fire, and in between that time, we have many times issued urgent safety recommendations when we feel that there uh, is a safety concern that needs to be addressed. So that's something we can and have done in the past, and we don't wait for the end to do that. that yes. Uh, the question is, is there a black box? Do you want to talk about that sure. today, Paul? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, regarding the black box, there is no requirement for a vessel of that size to have a black box on board. Uh, furthermore, we have not been informed that the vessel was fitted uh, voluntarily with a black box. Right. And what was the second part? Well, I, we have a great deal of experience when there is uh, wreckage in determining what happened, and there that can come through interviews, other information that we obtain. So I have full confidence that we'll be able to determine what happened, regardless of of the structure. Do you have to contact lawyers if there, if there's any I don't know, but thank you. Uh, appreciate the time. The next few days we'll be doing daily uh, press conferences as long as the information we'll comes. Mic, we'll be trying to do daily press We'll be doing daily press conferences for the at least for the next few days. And so you can follow up you can follow us on Twitter at NTSB underscore newsroom where the next press briefing will be uh, details will be put on there. Sure, Jennifer Homendy, H O M as in Mary. E-N-D-Y.